on board New Year's Eve. <laughs> um, lesson number two, this is only going to be a quick lesson. Uh, firstly, you'll notice I'm wearing chainmail. That's because this one, I'm introducing chainmail, so that's pretty cool. Firstly, oh, I just want to alliterate. Remember guys, safety first. And I don't need to say anything more about that, do I? Okay, so just remember safety first. Okay, uh, first thing, I always get asked when I'm doing demonstrations and that, oh, I want to get into sword fighting. What's the right sword for me? I si simply explain it this way. What I tell my students and guys that I teach, get a hand and a half sword. Why? Because you can use it single-handed, so you can use a single, you learn the single-handed tactics and how it's used single-handedly. But not only that, you can go and grip it with two hands and use it as a two-handed sword. So you get to learn the two-handed side of things as well. So you get a two-in-one deal for one sword. But I generally sit there and say, get a sword you're comfortable with. It's no good having a uh, claymore the same size as mine if you're four foot nothing, because you're not going to be able to wield it properly, are you? So always remember, have a sword that you're comfortable with. Now. Introduction to chainmail, this is going to be very quickly because chainmail is very self-explanatory. There's two main types, I know there's several different types that you can get such as like wedge and round and all that, but there's two main types, there's riveted and butted. Depending on what you're using it for, depends on what you want to actually buy. If you're going to a fancy dress party, obviously you're not going to wear the 60 kilos worth of chainmail that I've got on. So. Just remember that if what you're using it for, it comes into what you're buying. All right, uh, to serves of the legs. All right, as you can tell, mine are spring steel butted, 20 kilos by themselves. Um, you'll see some have toe cap, some don't. Mine don't. I had to make mine myself, but yeah. Spring steel butted uh, chasseurs, so they're the legs. You put them on first, then you put your Gamson or Herbert. On, All right, your Gamson goes, is a thick padded jacket. I'm wearing a, an armoring jacket. You'll see in the photo, I've got a Gamson. Well, I'm just not wearing it today because it's quite muggy. Um, so your jacket goes on, then your herberk or your herbergen, which is your chainmail shirt. You'll notice mine's riveted. Um, that's because I need more protection here than I do down there. I'm more likely to be hit in the centre of seeing body mass than I am anywhere else. Maybe my arms, but you know, you've got a shield and a sword and that sort of thing to help deflect and parry blows from there. And then you've got chainmail, cloth or quiff. which are your hoods. Uh, mine's spring seal butted again. Um, I wear a flat top helm or a spanging helm. Okay, um, in the last lesson, I'm just gonna grab the sword. Uh, in the last lesson, we learnt parts of the sword. So we learnt the fireball or the weak of the blade. We learnt the forte or the, the strong of the blade. We learnt what makes up the hilt section of the blade. We learnt to tip the front blade, otherwise known as the true of the blade, and the rear of the blade, otherwise known as the false. Right? We know this is a fuller, and for the ones that are got like a diamond section to the blade, that's called a riser. Okay, so you've got your cross guard and quillings, you've got your handle, you've got your pommel, and obviously the tang runs in through there. One thing I'm going to mention now because I've introduced the chainmail and I've got a sword. Care and maintenance. If you notice, this one here has an Allen key nut that you can pull it all apart, the hilt section all apart. I say for cutting, this is a great way to go because as you'll see, a lot of your targets have moisture involved. Tamashigiri uses mats that are soaked in water. Your bottles filled with water, obviously, water. 
So if you go like that, water's going to drip down into the hilt section of the blade. You pull it apart, you clean off the tang of any surface rust, and you can check for cracks in the tang, which is more important as well. It will let you know that either you need to replace your sword or replace the blade. Uh, how long do, does it need to, to do in between pulling it down? For this one here, I use it a lot for demonstrational purposes and training and that, and I do a lot of cutting myself um, on times that I'm sitting there doing nothing, get bored, go and cut stuff. I pull it apart once a fortnight to once a month, keeping it clean and that, but I do a lot of cutting with mine. If you're only gonna cut with it once a month or so, well, you could go, let's say, once every three months pulling it down and that. Okay, with chainmail, well, there's not much real care and maintenance you've got to do to it. However, it tends to delink where you've been hit. So, while you're wiping it down with the oil you're wiping it down with, just check the link, seeing if they're coming apart, and then you can repair it as you're actually oiling it. As for your blades, uh, I know that a lot of people have their own ideas to sharpening and cleaning and that, so I'm not going to get too much into it. But what I like to do is I use, like for the banana trees, the left fibrous stuff on the blade, I use a hobby steel wool. Wipe my blade down and get all the gunk off it. Wipe it down with some window cleaner or something with a clean rag. And then I get there, sharpen the blade up. Right, and... I say it's personal preference to how sharp you keep your swords. I tend to keep mine less sharp than when I do a katana, but you get, you'll get the gist of how sharp you'd want to keep yours depending on what they're used for. And what then I do to clean it, I get some wet and dry sandpaper with the same, in the same water I put my stones in, and just rub the blade down, getting rid of any surface rust and that, and uh, clean it up a bit more. And then I'll wipe it down with a rag and then and then I'll wipe it over with oil. Now I use both on my armor and my swords, I use uh, chainsaw oil. It contains a substance that kills rust as well as protects it. So if you've got a little bit of surface rust and you don't feel like you know going through a bit of sandpaper to sandpaper the rust, generally a wipe or two with chainsaw oil will take the rust off anyway. Um, and besides it's hard to get rust off the chain mail. And um, so just wiping it down with chainsaw will, will help. Um, as for that being said, I often get asked, oh, you'll, you'll need to be fit to wear this stuff and swing swords and that sort of stuff. Well, I sit there and say, yeah, well, it helps to be fit. So push-ups, sit-ups, steves, you know, a weight routine or whatever. You don't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, but the best training you can do is actually wearing your armor and training with a sword because obviously wearing 60 kilos worth of armor is different to bench pressing or curling 60 kilos worth of weight so you know just get used to wearing your armor that's the main key point when it comes to armor is it does weigh a lot and you just got to get used to it some people think i'm nuts i actually sleep in mine believe it or not when i go out on the weekends and do some combat and scrub and that, I'll sleep on mine for the weekend. Um, or if I've done a whole heap of training that day and that, and I'm sitting there having a few beers with a couple of mates, I'll go to end up going to sleep in mine because I couldn't be stuffed taking it off, call me lazy or whatever. But hey, uh, I do sleep in my chamber. Uh, with your going to the toilet in your armor, uh, okay, medieval knights used to actually shite themselves. Uh, if you get my meaning, uh, they used to go to the toilet without taking it off. Uh, you'll get used to going to the toilet being civilised while wearing armour. It's a little bit more difficult than the normal going to the toilet, but you'll get the idea yourself. I don't need to get into that, do 